everybody. Welcome back to Hers and Hers. Um, I think this is our fourth episode. Woo, it is. Very exciting. Our, it's definitely our fourth episode. Thank you guys so much if you subscribed and have been tuning in so far. We have been working very, very diligently to give you guys a very down-to-earth, satirical, but informative yeah, and cool podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in. And we definitely take a look at the comments that you all leave on our um, Apple Podcasts and our Anchor app. The YouTubers. Yeah, all the YouTubes. We look at your comments and we saw that someone asked, um, or actually a couple someone said something to us, and they asked if we could just do an episode with just the two of us. They said that they really like our dynamic and they would like to know more about us and what we have going on. So we decided this week that we would do a couple of icebreakers. Yeah, a deeper dive into hers and hers with her and her. And before we get started right. on that, let's just... <laughs> my name is Tay, by the way. <laughs> I am Nick, a.k.a. Nick Space. This is Tay Sick Thoughts and Tay Nikki. Yeah, so follow us on the Instagrams, the Twitters, and make sure that you like and subscribe to Hers and Hers. But let's get into these icebreakers. We have some questions that we're going to ask each other from We're Not Really Strangers. I actually really like this game. It's actually really fun. And they do a whole bunch of like cool um, <laughs> YouTube like uh, series videos where they kind of like get people to talk to their ex-boyfriends and just get people to like, you know, like first... Uh, this is to to me. I hate first like blind dates, but they do blind dates where people do icebreakers like this. And oh, then we hell have, no. yeah, the, I couldn't do a, a blind date. But they also have this best self deeper talk game too. It's like another icebreaker game. But both of these will make you cry. So I think these are good to get. Hopefully we don't cry. But we're about to start getting into these questions. Okay. Um. They have different levels. So yeah. I'm just gonna pick a random. Yeah, just one skim over them. I'm gonna pick a random one from level one, but she, you, you guys, if you guys don't know, Tay is a Scorpio, so we're trying to make sure the questions are not too, yeah. <laughs> too personal. <laughs> Mind your business. <laughs> oh wow, this is not good. Okay, <laughs> all right, we're gonna start from level one. First question um, for Tay about myself: uh, Do you think that I fall in love easily? Why or why not? Oh my God! No. I really want everyone to mind their business. Y'all are in my friend's business. Um, I'm gonna answer this as you can answer it as okay. truthfully and transparently as possible. I'm not gonna be offended. As a Scorpio, I am very honest. So let me just do what I do best and read these hoes. I'm just kidding. I am the hoes in question. <laughs> um, I do think that you fall in love very easily. I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think that being able to like love people is a super positive thing. Do people take advantage of you in those situations? Always. Absolutely, <laughs> they yeah. do. Forever. And I would rather that not happen. <laughs> Please stop. I would rather <laughs> that not happen, but you do fall in love very easily. What was the rest of the question? That was that, that was it. No, wait, no, wait. Was wait. it? Do you fall in love? Do you think I fall in love easily? Why or why not? Yes. Okay. So the reason that I think you fall in love very easily, um, <sighs> we won't get too deep into the family traumas, but long story short, I just think that that's something that you value and desire, and like you do, I do think that you see yourself being surrounded by like good people and so I think that you're just like an open book and you're open to people coming so into your space. Though. The wild part about it is that you would say that and then other people would probably be like, yeah, you probably don't date at all. That's what is so funny. That's why I love being and a Gemini, And those are you guys. the people that probably take advantage of you. And yeah, I'll beat like people, everybody up. People really think that I'm like a whole <laughs> seashell. But I am super sensitive and a hopeless romantic. Like my biggest dream is a man liking me enough to chase me to the airport. <laughs> Yeah, but no one's done that yet. Oh, so, my God. <laughs> it, I mean, it's, uh, it's feeling. <laughs> I'm crying. A man chasing you to the airport just like in a rom-com. No, like, I'm talking about, like, you know what? I need to leave for me. And he's like, fuck that. I love you. And then he runs all the way to Hartsfield Jackson, gets on the train. I'm talking about sweaty as hell. He's like, Nick. And I'm like, <gasps> Julian? Who the fuck is Julian? I don't even know who Julian is, but if, so you're, cute. if your name is Julian, that's a cute name, and you would like to chase him to the airport, I'll be there tonight. So I'm sorry, Julian. If you not looking right, don't pull up on my Oh, sis. I'm sorry. No ugly we, Julian. I'm shallow. No ugly Julians. No ugly and no Julians, Julians with childbearing hips. <laughs> no thick Julians. <laughs> Look, all two of y'all. Y'all remember that episode of <laughs> the, 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 the episode of Girlfriends where Joan had like a thick 
dude. Yeah, he had, and he had girdle. a girdle. <laughs> he took his girdle. Right before sex, I never want to have to. I mean, he can't I'm not trying to body shame anyone. Swish, swish, swish. But that's just not my. I part. I do not. Um, Prefer imagine a thicker man. I prefer a skinty nigga. I mean, man, when it comes to men, I'm really honestly like I'm hetero flexible, so it's like I'm not okay. really tripping about your body type like that for real, for real. But no, you can't be one of the men that's wearing a faja. And if you guys do not know what a faja is, it what is a Dominican is? shaper that you wear after a BBL. What? I thought that was a fupa. No, the fupa, fupa is the fold on top of the coochie. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, you, if, you, if you've been listening to us, you know that Nicolay makes up words. And I'm going to say this on air so that y'all know she is dropping the Nictionary, which is a dictionary of words created, words and phrases created by Nick. It's going to be so much fun. So y'all keep your eye out for that. But I did not make Faha, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> a nigga beat me to it. Like, I'm crying. You Dominicans. <laughs> no. Okay, <laughs> okay. Okay, mm. so I got one for you about me. So are all of these like me asking you about me? Well, so I, it, it do say we not really strangers, so I think okay. that's what okay, it is. Okay, we going to know the, each other. That's the goal. Which this is good for us because even though me and Nick have really good chemistry, we don't know each. We we just met. We just met like maybe three. We did four months ago. We did. So we both have our own individual like levels of chaos, which is so yes. crazy. Yeah, yeah. But it works somehow. Um, okay, so who do you to think my celebrity crush is? I hate to say this, y'all. It has to be an obnoxious, pretty nigga. There's something that obnoxious. The thing about it is though. <laughs> the thing about it is though. It's wild. But you're so like you're so yourself that you just love a douchey celebrity nigga, Chris Brown, or Chris Brown like niggas. I feel like I feel like if you could like take like the <laughs> physical molds, I feel like this like if she could take the physical mold of Chris Brown and like lower the ego a little bit, minus the abuse. Yes, minus that part. Like minus that part, but like phys- the physical manifestation of Chris Brown. But I'm trying to think of like. Like the jumping around, the dancing ass nigga. Yes, yes. Um. Okay, but I sh- won't argue with you there. I, do you? Are you attracted to Dave East? I think that he's attractive, but there's something about him. I don't know him. Is personally, it the warehouse obviously. vibe? Um. He honestly, gives warehouse I kind of like the. I kind of like the fact that he's like. A Muslim black man. Oh, I'm I not- love a thick brow. I love a brown skin, and I love braids. Like I like hair. You were telling me about um, his legs. Even if you don't have like a fade, like which I like fades too. You know, I'm not opposed to anything black men do. He looked like he would like your, like a nigga would approach you in the subway, and you'd be like, "Stop, <laughs> nigga! I'm trying to order my sandwich." You'd be like, "Ugh." <laughs> like, 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 not for pop smoke. <laughs> she like the way that I move. <laughs> and you be like, stop it, daddy. <laughs> like, oh my god. Um, honestly, I'm super standoffish, so I kind of need. So I I do find myself like a little being aggressor. more attracted to yeah. men who are like a little bit. I I honestly tend to be the aggressor. Yeah. In most situations, but I need them to like reciprocate the energy in some way. I'm really trying to. It's so I, I feel like I'm really trying to think of a nigga that like. I, I don't know why I just thought about Omarion. No. No. I am not attracted to Omarion at all. Like, no, I'm not talking uh, about that. I'm just oh. talking about <laughs> the dance. No, I do think that he's a good looking man and I understand why other people are attracted to him. <laughs> I, but I also, I connect, I think that I'm attracted to people that I like kind of have the opportunity to get to know in some way. Like, I think I'm attracted to like personalities. So, wait, who, so who would you be like? Who would be your top three? I ain't gonna lie. Please, please give it to us. Keith Powers is number one, two, and three. You guys. <laughs> you guys. No disrespect to Ryan Destiny. She can be number four and five. We got to uh, censor his name out. <laughs> Boot Powers. He is so cute. He is no, so he's really attractive. handsome. Can we talk and about how we met him? <laughs> we met him once, and he was so nice, and he didn't give any creep energy. Like, obviously, he's in a relationship, and he was just really chilling and just having a good time with us. He was like singing and just enjoying himself no, he was individually. Nice. And I just really appreciated that energy. He was, he was like, I like, like your hair. Very inviting, but he wasn't like, oh yeah, come over here, let me get, like, no, it was very. It was very like platonic, like, yes, hey guys, you know, really y'all are having a good time. That. I want to have a good time. So Keith Powers is number one, and then who's two and three? <sighs> okay, um, yeah, so, <laughs> 
<laughs> I said oh, he was one, two, and three, but I guess I can think of a two and oh, a three. Oh, Keith Powers is one, two, and three. Yes, literally top three. Keith, Keith Powers, Powers with mustache. Keith Powers with beard. Keith Powers with Keith, Keith Powers, Powers with, with short hair. Oh, Keith right. Powers with long hair. <laughs> I'm crying. No, he's so cute. Like he's not too tall. He's not too short. He's like just the right amount of he's like a Goldilocks sexy. type of nigga. Just he looks right. young, but he doesn't look. He's too young, young he's like but a distinguished. mature. Yes. yes, like he just looks healthy. Actually, that's like a good way to put that. He looks why, very healthy. Why is that? I was I was talking about that online. Like most times when I'm attracted to a man, I like a man that looks well kept to where he's like, okay, this nigga has eats like a green juice. Yes. you know what I'm saying. Like he runs in the oh, morning. You know who else I'm attracted to? Um, Franklin Saint. I don't know his. I don't know his real name. If you guys, but he's so Snowfall good from Snowfall. looking. And yeah. I like how he be making the Nigga, move. I built this shit <laughs> brick by brick by oh, myself. <laughs> like, and if I got to do it, <laughs> like that shit. I don't care what another nigga talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that shit. They had me like, nigga, I, really? get, on, nigga, I get on the corner. Okay. <laughs> what you need me to sell? Ask the grass, Crack, baby. crack, crack, crack. crack. <laughs> <laughs> be on the corner like my boo flipping signs my boo set the best crack <laughs> yeah so Franklin Saint for sure I like I handsome. like his little corny TikTok visuals oh he does do those yeah but that's where he's UK got his shirt him. open and the wind is blowing I've never seen those but <laughs> I'm gonna send it to you so funny expeditiously why have I never seen those what the fuck and then I will say A phenomenal actor um, too Damn, we're doing celebrities. I'm about to start naming regular niggas. Um, <laughs> Please don't. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I don't think. Damn. I like that Yaya guy who's in the... Um, Yaya Abdul Hamid. Hamid yes. or something like that. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, Yaha from know. Candyman. You guys have seen Candyman? Yes. If and you guys the seen Watchmen, that. the series with Regina King. Yes. I think he looks so good. Like... Um, yeah, Abdul yeah, Man, I think. and I like the roles that he picks for himself. Like he, he stays in his lane. He is so fine, unlike some people that are. I actors. said Candyman three times and he didn't come. I know you busy, but when you done, can you please? She like, gonna, if my friend dies, just know it's because she was in the mirror saying. If I Candyman. unalive myself, Lord, I went out the way I wanted to. So <laughs> Candyman, please. Let don't say know. it in here. I don't want him to. I don't like Girl, scary show things. Up. <laughs> I'm going to ask him to take you. I'm going to say, she said it. What's that What's that Beyonce song? Dance for you? <laughs> Tonight I'm going to dance with you. That's what you plan as soon as Candyman jump out the window? Yeah. <laughs> does he come through a window or does he come through like a door or does he come through the mirror? Nigga, he can, Is he coming through the sink? What's I'm, happening? I'm willing to try every window and mirror. In the home to see. Okay, all right. Maybe maybe it'll be multiple candy men. You just gonna have the chair ready. Yeah. And you gonna pull the lever and the water's gonna drop. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> playing around. That man. It, and you know what I like too about him too. He really does. Like you were saying, like he's so good at picking a role. That yeah, is good for him. It's like, hard for me to choose crushes because I'm not only attracted to I people physically. I think men physically. are so cringe the most yes, of the time. Exactly. But like, I like to figure out, like, even on a basic level, like, I could never say that. I can't say that, like, Chris Brown is a crush. His character is on the ground. No, no. He's literally, he's like. He's in hell. Somebody was telling me something yesterday. <laughs> he was doing an interview and he was just, like, straight, like, no offense to anybody who does drugs or anything like that, but he was doing an interview and he was just so high like off of like coke and I was just like man man what has happened to like pray for him what happened to ain't no way Chris Brown I do really wish him the best you know I'm sure he's doing what he can to get better hopefully hopefully all these niggas are doing what they can to get better they're a fucking mess let's see ooh let me get in there I'm gonna get in the middle let me get that next question going get in the middle I like that though I feel like your crushes are a good reflection of you okay cool cool oh man this is all right. All right. Okay. Damn, we just we gonna do this one and the next one. I'm done. There's two people know they're learning too much about me. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> what is it? Are you lying to yourself about anything? I know I'm fully Absolutely. delusional. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, why did I get... live in an alternate reality. Yeah, we're very. I'm sorry, but the middle ground we meet on is delusion. <laughs> like Damn. we're both. <laughs> we <laughs> live in a reality that other people You're may to not a subscribe Gemini and a Scorpio, to. Scorpio, like. I'm lying to myself every As, day. Every time I t retell a story about my life, as I exaggerate. As soon as my feet touch the ground, I'm like, mm. And I leave lies. out the parts where I fucked up. Absolutely. I was talking about this yesterday. I was telling somebody, I was like, nah, nigga, I'm fully delusional. Like, I'm okay to admit What's that? that quote where James Baldwin is talking to Nikki Giovanni, and she's like, if you loved me, you would lie to me. Oh, the conversation. I love myself. Yeah. So I'm going to lie to me. No. As much as I need to to get me through to the next level, 
And I'm gonna just keep leveling up. Lies and levels. Lies Honestly, and levels. I have I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I practice my own self delusion, but when it comes to people being delusional with me, that's when I get a little like nigga, I already lie. I to live Nick. in a safe delusion. Though. Yeah, I feel like, like I think we live in a safe delusion. We're not doing it in a way that we're like other people are being put But it scares onto. me and I hate that too. Like another thing is I can say that we do be in the middle when it comes to us being both delusional in our own like respective ways, but in the same breath we're so self aware that we don't even when we are delusional we're so hypercritical to where we, we will really check ourselves. Yeah. And there'll be times where I'll be like, Tay, you'll be like, bitch, no. I know I'm tripping. <laughs> like, oh, and girl, I'll be we like, already knew that. You'll be like, I know I'm tripping. <laughs> or you'll be like, Nick, and I'll be like, bitch, you right. <laughs> I am wrong. We be in the car, y'all. I'm going to say the late, our late night We be like, having late offs. night car conversation. We need to start recording those. No, those as are soon good. As you get a dash cam. As soon as you put something party next door, I already know. I just take... Yeah, take your wig off. I'm like, okay, here this bitch go. <laughs> then we're like, like, yeah, girl, we get super deep in conversation, and we'll like read each other, and then we'll just sit there in silence, and it will be like, you right. Okay, moving yeah, on to the next, next illusion, the next chapter. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know. I feel like even if we tried to deeply lie to ourselves, we probably wouldn't still let ourselves stay there. Yeah, I I don't think so. That's one thing I appreciate about this very new friendship. I'm crying. I'm putting that the one <laughs> that, that one, I pulled a question that was boring. Finish the sentence. Just by looking at you, I think. Just by looking at you, I think that you take care of yourself. Thank you. Um, I would say you're probably about that business and you carry yourself well. And all I can of those tell. things are true. Because there's one thing I have always heard about pussy power, but I have never, ever in my life heard shit about Tay or Courtney. Please say ne- something about is, me yes, if you and want Courtney to. is the other half of pussy power, but I have never in my life ever heard a singular thing about these girls. I feel like we're really social, but we know how to balance um, like our social and our personal lives. Like I don't even think, I was just talking about this today on Twitter <laughs> too, like in depth. We yeah, should, we'll get into that in a second. But I, that's what I, one thing I will say that I really do like like about you guys. I think that when somebody gives me an opportunity to learn things about them, that's when I'm more intrigued by them. Like if somebody were to be like, "Hey, Nick, you know Tay, a crazy bitch," even then I probably still fuck with you anyway because I'm just like my nigga. Like maybe she was a crazy bitch to you because you probably did something crazy. Right. Sometimes niggas don't like to tell you and that's what true. they did. What did you do to her? To make them turn, not to gaslight Now, let me tell up. you now, before we get too far in this, I done did some crazy shit. No, yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. I'm provoked. Yeah, but I ain't Nonsense. never heard, I ain't never heard nothing from them niggas okay, that you did okay, the crazy okay, okay, things cool, cool, too. Cool, that's cool. the thing, though. Yeah. They not here no more. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> sorry to y'all. We were smoking on Pookie Law tonight. <laughs> like, sorry to you niggas. Sorry to that man. <laughs> like, I'm sorry to rest in peace to those niggas I'm that Tay obliterated. But yeah, yeah, I feel um, like, yeah. I feel like whenever I move on from any situation with like a person in my life, I let them go. And I don't know why, but it always feels like I've transitioned into a new dimension. Because once I decide I don't want to be around a person, I stop seeing them. That's and what, I'm like, are they living in another dimension? Because they're still in the same I, city as that's me. That's what I was saying. We still got mutual friends. And somehow, I still haven't ran into them. And either my friends and peoples are real good at keeping me away from niggas they know I'm finna go crazy on. Or... They live in a different dimension, and that's what I like to believe. And this is the delusion that we were speaking of about three minutes ago. I think ago. that for me personally, it's more of an <laughs> out of sight, out of mind type of thing. Mm. So if something were to happen where I don't like somebody anymore, or we were to fall out or something like that, it just for me, I'm just like, I don't see it. Right. It's not here anymore. So as long as I stop feeding the energy into that situation, that it seems like exactly. that shit will take care of itself. But like speaking of Twitterverse and us getting into stuff, I what a cool thing was was that me and Tay originally connected through Twitter. Yeah. And like we kind of connected because we're both very opinionated online, especially in online spaces. So like on Twitter today, I was just telling her a little bit earlier that we were talking about how, you know, people are just kind of invasive when it comes to them getting to know you instead of letting things naturally blossom. Yeah. And like, how do you feel about just people knowing your business? Because even us playing this game is funny because we're such open books to a certain degree. So it's like, we'll tell you things. 
but we'll still be like, you don't need to know the full tea about the situation. Yeah. But people are really arguing about that today. And you I just, just need like, to know the base part that like defines my character. Yes. Like that's, as long thank as you, you that's can decide I I, exactly. how to move forward with me. Exactly. That's the information that you need. And I feel like I'm so open that like as time goes on and things happen, the the other little details that don't matter as much will start to come out and you'll be able to decipher from there what you want to do with that information. I'm never we're gonna leave out information that could leave you in a certain situation based on my character. And I think that what like what we were talking about like earlier today on Twitter was basically just, you know, like when it comes to being in social spaces, social spaces are just like professional spaces and like just talking about stuff. And I really had to think about that, like you were saying, like I don't feel like leaving things out is yeah. really omitting the truth. I just feel like you kinda have to really create that open space in that energy to where somebody's like you know what I feel like telling you about this yeah. but I feel like one thing about us that kind of stands out like you were telling me this like a few months ago and we were talking I was like why do people always have this weird degree of closeness to me yeah like stop telling me stuff yo like <laughs> whoa bruh I did not need to know and that and it's not even that I don't want to hear it or that I'm not an empathetic yeah, person yeah it's just really fast it's just the whole premise of like I think because you know sometimes when we talk we'll be like yeah so yep this is why I don't fly on airplanes anymore and my grandpa died and then people will be like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be like, yeah, anyway, so how's your day going? But I think that you being comfortable <laughs> enough to just share your trauma yeah. and not be so hindered by it is what makes people feel so comfortable to you. Yeah. And then when same I tell... Where you, same with you, too, I yeah. definitely agree. And I think that being like... And I think that sometimes when people, you know, will come at me and be like, hey, here's all my personal business. And I'm just like, damn, why are you telling me that? And I'm like, wait. I'm the type of person to where I'm not sh ashamed of my life and my experiences, so I can see why somebody would feel super close to me. Even yeah. though to me, this doesn't seem like a secret, this doesn't seem like anything to be ashamed of, to be ashamed of, but I didn't realize how being yourself was just being transparent. It, like that's it the draw, first degree it of really transparency. Does, people draw into that. Definitely, I've never like, like I've been like in that. so many situations. I, I think there's a fine line though. Yeah. Because, um, you know, there's like you said, there's business settings and there's personal settings. And I feel like oftentimes living in Atlanta, those personal settings and business settings get mixed because there's a lot of people who you have networked with or worked with on projects that end up in your personal space because of how close-knit yeah. our community is. Mm, and yeah. I'm not saying that it's all of Atlanta, but I'm just saying the community that we exist within in Atlanta, it kind of just like everybody yeah. intertwines. Yeah. So I might be in the room drunk as hell with the CEO that I'm signing a contract with the next day. You this know what is, I mean? And we fucked up, we talking to each other. Yeah, girl. Oh my God. And I, and I have done this before. <laughs> and, <I'm laughs> and you gotta just learn not to hold it against you. And honestly, I love that about Atlanta. Cause I hate small talk. If I, I I hate small talk. We're so good at talk. That's what irritates me because I feel like I'm so good at conversing generally. So when yes. you hit me with small talk, I'm like, nigga, we can really talk about some real shit. Yeah. Like, why are you talking about how's there's my dog? Enough, first of all, there's enough going on in the world for us to talk about something. To where I don't have, ever had to talk about myself. Yes, exactly. There is definitely enough going on in the world where I don't have to ask you, well, how are you doing today? And then what'd you do? And how was the weather? Like, don't small talk me to death. If we're at a party and you, all you have to offer me is small talk, just shut the hell up. I just That's, can't. Or even if we're at like a mixer. If all you have, no, honestly, period, wherever we are, if we are in line at the grocery store and please, all you have to me. offer is small talk, please don't talk to me. I just, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just never been a fan of it. And I'm not saying that we have, you have, there has to be depth in every single conversation, but you don't really have to waste someone's time with small talk. You can either get to the nitty gritty of it yeah. or just be yourself. And I feel like a lot of the times that I've made connections in Atlanta has just been me genuinely being myself. Yeah. A lot of times I approach people like, yo, I like your shoes or your hair. And then we talk for an hour and I find out that this person, he used to be this guy that used to come into my sandwich shop when I was like 19. He would come in there every day, didn't even know who he was, ended up being a CEO of a hair company. And that's oh. how I got my first hair contract. Dope. Making this man sandwiches every day and just cracking jokes with this old ass man. I was just like, <laughs> he came in every day for his lunch break, come to find out he's a whole, you know what I'm saying, chairman. I was like, oh shit. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like a lot of, you know, like eliminating small talk is just by you being yourself. So there's no like natural way to approach, you know, a conversation. Yeah. Do what's best for you. Yeah. And I think with social media, like a lot of people have like lost that art of just like basic conversation the and I know has conversation that. saying the word people have lost the art of conversation is 
it might sound controversial yeah or just stupid in general because it's like who doesn't know how to talk it's like a lot of people like a lot of people are constantly on the internet and all they have to do is type there's it's just, no nervousness it's taking away the social or energy. aspect of there's, things yeah That's there's why. no true social you know there's no social anxiety so they're on the internet so then when they get in person and they really have to face the people that they've said things to or people that they want to continue a conversation with it might be like, oh shit, like this is super overwhelming. That's why I and feel then like, they might end up just saying some goofy shit. That's why I feel like like basically the internet has made people completely like unfamiliar when it comes to having organic relationships. That's why I feel like you were saying this the other day in our group message talking about Will and Jada, how you know, like you appreciate how they're able to be transparent about what yeah, they're doing. Yeah, and we with. still don't know everything. We don't them. know shit. But that's the thing what about I was so like, I was like with the internet, people feel so close. They feel in proximity with these people. It's the hyper, I think it's the hyper visibility. And if you guys don't know what hyper visibility is, it's just having a very large platform and having just people coming at you on a regular basis. Like having anything over 5,000 followers, yeah. even 1,000 followers for some people, that, that's hyper visibility. Because there is a sense of proximity because yeah. you can at Jada Pinkett Smith or at Will Smith. And Are they like, going to respond? Probably not. No. But you feel like you're a part of the conversation. Me personally, um, I'm not in their business. I might comment on their business because I do think that, like, you know, it's a, it's an opening for other conversations. But, like, to specifically be like, Jada ain't shit and Will ain't shit, which I've been just seeing all week. I'm just like. I've been one of those. <laughs> they continue. I'm just like, what are what are we basing this off of? Like, one interaction that they talked about out it's, loud? It's like, the same thing, like, to me, I think it's wild. It's just the same thing with, like, how people talk about just, like, body posy stuff and stuff like that. Like, when people say certain things, they're not expecting a response, for one. And, like, secondly, with this Will and Jada stuff, this is the first time that people are actually seeing, like, a relationship, like, be fully transparent like this. Yeah. Some people have not even even had that transparency and I feel like it's been like that for the longest, because, like, I Especially remember... celebrities. Black celebrities? Yes, I remember when... Hell no. What's her name? Uh, Monique. She had a show, and we're not even gonna get into all the stuff that she be talking about, because she's on <laughs> auntie level 3000 this week. She... Or this year, actually. Is this but who we are? Anyway, she <laughs> used to have a show, and she had either Will or Jada on there one time, and she tried to ask them questions about their open relationship. And Jada was like, who said we had an open relationship? And she was like, oh, damn, I heard that. Like, I saw that. In, that's I've seen that in so many magazines. Like, bad blah, 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 blah. Jealousy. And, like, now, fast forward, however many years, it's probably been, like, 10 years now. Fast forward, like, 10 years. Will and Jada are talking about their infidelities on, you know, national on a national scale they're literally they're talking in about magazines how they like stepped out on each other how the they did have talk. specific openness in their relationship but um there are still boundaries within that openness and it's just really interesting because most of the commentary that i've seen and this is like the main thing that i want to talk about with this point is why aren't people breaking up <laughs> if they're unhappy <laughs> I we don't know that they're unhappy though. That is also true, and I also read something like I had watched this therapist video earlier this week, and it's been it's been mentally wrecking me every day. I keep thinking about it. Yeah. But this man basically was saying that when people think about relationships, there are multiple strings of communication. There isn't one singular string of communication and one way to communicate to somebody. Right. So it's like you could be feeling some type of way, but the whole point of a relationship in a long term relationship, I've never been in one, but the whole point of a long term <laughs> relationship is to understand these multiple strings of communication and meet your partner where they are or figure it out but people just think that it's either a my way or a highway type of situation yeah. so they think that staying in this situation and staying frustrated with this person is easier than communicating and a lot of people have never had a lot of people have never seen the positive effects of communication so people are scared I'm one of these people like I'll be scared to communicate how I feel to somebody because I've never seen a relationship stay together after me communicating my needs whether or not they were positive or negative i've never seen that before so a lot of people will project or close themselves off and stay somewhere they're not happy because yeah. they're like you know being in someone's presence is better than being alone after telling them the truth about how i feel yeah even with gq with the gq magazine interview which is what has stirred all this stirred this will and jada drama back up and apparently the day before the gq article was released 
Jada Pinkett was in a headline saying, <laughs> She's I want to I want to experience love. <laughs> I think that's what the headline she read. Said, or, I, I want to be better at experiencing love. Said, or I want to be better at sharing yeah, love. Something yeah, yeah, something like that. Before she dies, and something like that. Like, yeah, nigga, ain't you married? It's on her bucket list <laughs> yeah, to experience like, love. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, maybe she means like a different kind of love because there's multiple people ways People immediately people thought it was, she was talking about romance. And I'm just oh, like, yeah, I get people, it. But. People immediately were like, oh, she ain't shit. She ain't never loved Will, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, damn, all they did was, they probably didn't even read the full article. Of course not. That's the thing. They the probably the read the headline the clickbait. and then went on with their commentary. And in the GQ article, they actually didn't, ha- I didn't think they released the headline. The only thing that I saw, which I'm sure there's a headline, obviously. It's an article. But... <laughs> I saw the body text and there was a part where Will where Will was speaking on how unhappy Jada was because she had made so many compromises in the beginning of their relationship, including like not going on tour. Yeah, I remember and that. opening up for like some huge rock band, um, so that he could go film some movie that let me I was about to throw shade. I'm sorry. What, Mr. what movie was Mr. it? Mr. Will's. I don't know what movie she said, but Whatever it was, she should have went on that damn tour. It probably was five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it was be, Wild Wild West. Was this the best? <laughs> no, that, that, no, Wild Wild West is a good movie, but it flopped in good. box offices. Let's mm-hmm. just if we're if we're Niggas talking about wasn't stats, ready for the Western thing. They theme. wasn't ready for a black but man But now y'all in the wearing West. boots. Anyway. Anyway, we don't need y'all's white man's paperwork to show us that Will Smith's Wild Wild West Nigga was good. But it was just interesting movie. to hear that she had sacrificed so much. And my immediate thought was like, I don't know broke women who will sacrifice Yeah, I was so like, why? there are broke women out here. There are women that are getting no monies out here. Tell and they are not no. sacrificing anything. So it's in, and there's always that conversation of, oh, they're only staying for the money, or oh, they're financially dependent on each other. Will Smith and Jada Smith don't seem to be financially dependent on each other. Yeah, not at all. So it's just really interesting that that was the first thing that I thought about when he said that in the article. All the sacrifices she made, she would wake up every day crying. I'm like, leave that nigga. And I think, You've been in enough movies. And, and you crazy. got two kids. And I think, Child yeah, support. That's a lot of reasons. Alimony. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, though. Like, give me the money, please. I think that's a lot of the reason why people have a difficult time empathizing with women who are more affluent and wealthy because they think that um, money and success means that they're just you, have you know more choices. You have more choices. You have more accessibility. And you do have more and choices. And to certain degrees, you do. But, but doesn't mean you want to make them. But m- not only that, but money and success does not mean that you have any self value or self worth or that you do have a lot. You know what I'm saying? Or like that, that you, you even have any value to other people. Exactly. The, I also thought about this. I was like, her and Will had been together for so long that I feel like there's a and Will Smith is so respected. It could be a be type a of situation you know, you where a failed situation with Will Smith. Yeah, where they wow. you had a failed situation with Will Smith. He's such a great guy. There must be something wrong with you. Exactly. It may have affected the same way that that she that, may have yeah. thought about that. Like, mm, maybe my dating life wouldn't be that great because either the guys I'm interested in have too much respect. That for they're going to have a deep level of intimidation because or they're look at your intimidated ex husband is Will, exactly. Yeah, or they don't want me because I have two kids. Like, even though she's wealthy, like, yeah, she still has two kids. And if we talking about, let me. Exactly the, these patriar- these patriarchal ideas. And I know that y'all are I know that y- these fools are out here listening to Kevin Samuels dumbass. Right? And I I'm sorry, I don't <laughs> typically call people stupid or dumb, but like I think that like the advice that he gives often is jelly headed, that's true. Troll advice. Jelly headed advice. And people listen to that. So I feel like they'll see Jada and be like, she's not a high value woman. She's d- yeah, she has the money, it, like, but she doesn't yeah. have a degree. She's divorced and she got two kids over the age of five. I can't be fucking with her. I make two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. No, honestly, but that's really true though. <laughs> Y'all make me sick. Yeah, and I feel like a lot, <laughs> even with the success and the money and all of that type of stuff. Like at the end of the day, some people really genuinely do internalize these standards and these societal, you know, ideologies and they think that they let these things become them and even, you know, this, despite the money, the fame and all that type of stuff, these things follow you when you don't have yeah. that, you know, that sense of internal validation. So it's like, even though I might be a millionaire, like, I'm still sad. Yeah. I still feel empty. So it's like, she could wake up crying every, shit, me, I'm not, I'm looking at her ass like, sure, you crying at Chanel sweats. 
I want to cry in Chanel sweat. I'm crying. I want to cry in a Porsche. We broke us out. I want to cry we on the beach. We crying naked, bitch. So I'm like, <laughs> like so I'm just like, I'm, I'm in my full size I, bed. She in cashmere sheets crying over Will Smith. Uh, the way I would have been like skirt skirt on niggas and left him easily. But it's just, you know what I'm saying? So it's like looking at those type of women and being like, girl, you stupid as hell. It's right. just like, it's easy to say that. Which is why I feel like it's so easy for, I hate to say it, but a lot of famous women stay in abusive situations because yeah. nobody really empathizes with them. Yeah. And I don't know if Jada and Will's situation is necessarily abusive, well, but know, the way yeah. that it was described, she, I don't even I'm know. I'm not going to, I don't put abuse past any partner. That's kind of how I feel no, at I, this point. I, I have yeah. just seen way too fucking We much. have seen men 4'11". We have seen men <laughs> who don't have any weight on them beat women, put guns to their chest, yes. all types of stuff. So it's like, when it comes to being an abuser... 11. When it comes to being an abuser, it really does not have It a, doesn't have a look. It does not have a look. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm just like, I can understand that. But when it comes to people staying with other people, it's weird. Like, because I know people who would leave immediately. And yeah. I've seen people in situations where they're just like, I stuck this shit out way longer maybe, than I would have. Maybe we're not, maybe people aren't wrong to stay. Maybe people aren't wrong like to Gabrielle stay. Like Gabrielle Union's situation. Yeah, like Gabrielle Union, she did come out like two weeks ago and say, If you guys haven't heard. If I knew, if I knew what I know now, I would not, if I was healed the way I am now, if I were in that situation today as myself right now, I wouldn't have stayed, but she did stay. And, and she's I, and I really appreciate seems to your be in a really on that good too, situation. Mm-hmm. At the time, she wasn't healed, but neither was her partner. And now maybe they're both healed, and maybe she's like, try it if you want to, nigga. I'm just letting you know. I'm not staying. And I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm not going to lie. There's one thing about, I like, when it comes, I like Gabrielle Union's approach with her talking about her situations and her relationship problems because I feel like it's very raw and honest. Yeah. And there's one thing I really appreciate about this person present day transparency with celebrities is that these black women are telling us that they are unhappy, they have experienced unhappiness, and there is a sunshine at the end of a rainbow, whether it be with a man, a family, or by yourself. Yes. And I'm like, even with the way that Tracy Ellis Ross talks about herself and her she being is, alone, she's okay. I think she's single, and she doesn't have any children. No, and she's in bold. You know, but she's she like, still she's has that family aspect yeah. through her sisters and brothers' children. But these things are so important for like young black women because they tell us so much that we, not even young black women just women in general especially just that like we need a partner we need a partner in order for us to f- have fulfilling lives and the same with men too i think yeah. that we're that we're all taught that like partnership is the way to find happiness and i don't think that necessarily works for every single person i think that generally yeah like okay maybe partnership is something that's like be, that we've conformed to but it might not work for everyone I think that is that's the thing I think people focus solely on telling people that you don't need to love these parts of yourself because eventually somebody will but in, in order to create I feel like in order to create a solid foundation for self validation you have to tell people that you need to love every part of yourself regardless of whether or not someone appreciates you or pour is into you you need to have that foundation for yourself and yeah. it's not that partnership romantic partnership isn't necessarily like the worst thing. add to but, what you already yeah, have but people going don't, for yourself. Yeah. So that's the problem I think where people got, you know, like w- Jada's quote a little misconstrued about her looking for love. People don't know that love can come from other places aside from romance. You can have love in your interpersonal relationships. You can have love for your friends, your, pets, your fa- anybody. Your plants. But because, you know, they feed us as a society to, to your only seek love. Your connect collection. Exactly. They only tell us you can find love in a man, a woman, or whoever you choose as a partner. And it's like, damn, you are neglecting your friends because you feel like, you know, you can only be poured into from your romantic you know, relationships. No. Yeah, and you, you know miss man? out. You miss yeah. out when you, when you, you know, hold out on one type of partnership. Waiting to, on, yeah, waiting on your life for romance or Prince Charming. Thing. You could be fulfilled from your friendships. I think it's about balance and just having like a... Um, I guess the word is a whole experience of love. And that's what it is. People have not, a lot of people have not even experienced those type of friendships. So they think that the only thing they can rely on is romance. And it's like, you can be fully fulfilled from a friendship, from platonic relationships, even from you finding love for art or whatever you like to do. So it's like, until we learn how to do that, people are going to be running themselves dry trying to find love or pouring into people or staying in relationships that don't serve you. Because we do them all the time. This makes me... Okay, so Twitter. This makes me think about (laughs) how the aunties are out here really going hard. They can't let it go. And I will say the name We'll not let it go. We won't say his name on our podcast because we denounce 
So we are referring to him as Bobbert Smelly. <laughs> Bobbert Smelly. I like that. Bobbert is going Smelly. to jail for the fuck ever. Guess who's Goodbye. Going to jail tonight. Adios. <laughs> Muchacho, sayonara, like motherfucker. Sorry. I'm it's funny because Bill crazy. Cosby was like, I think that y'all put too many charges and on him. And fuck him, too. He did. Somebody need to push his old ass Don't nobody upstairs. care about what charges that nigga got on him. He has ruined countless lives. And I'm disgusted at the display of women who are, the display of women and men who are not only on the internet, Gung ho for him. The celebrities who have spoken out for him on his behalf and trying to find some sort of reform for him, and the women who are outside protesting, the court, ma'am, the decision was made and it wasn't even the type of thing that they needed to talk about. He was like, they said he did this, he said I did it, and then the jury said, guilty bitch. What is what else is there to talk about? Staying and then in situations about- that don't serve you, like I was saying. But the fucked up part about it is, like, I feel like with sexual assault and stuff like that, it's like people empathize. Yeah, like the Stockholm is so deeply like ingrained it's either in our, because in us, they in are culturally. they are willing to subject their loved ones and family members and daughters and sons to that type of um, abuse, or they are the abuser. Or they've been abused and they feel some sort of connection to like, the person who has caused that type of harm to them. And it's just, it's really sad to me because I just think about the people, these women who are outside protesting, they probably have children. And they probably have young nieces like and you're, nephews. You're silencing that, so many victims when yeah. you stay, when you align yourself with abusers. And I don't think What's, people understand what, that. What would you even, what type of reform could you even suggest other than this nigga going to jail for the fuck ever and dying in there? I don't, honestly, I'm not gonna, I can't even. I think that somebody was saying that if he did, if there was a chance for reform for um, Bobbert, it would have been initially when he was let go the first time. In like 2004, right, and he didn't change. And he didn't it's change. 2021. He created. Not only did he deadbolt a system, like he literally he like created, created a new system. He created a new system and started take, and started to take victims out of state. Yes. So I'm just like, bro, you created stronger connections to better abuse people. And, yes. and then in my head, I'm just all like, he did was learn. He just got smarter about how he was going to do it. And I'm just like, I don't know. When it comes to things like this, like it's so important to really like have self awareness on. How, where we stand with issues and that's what I was saying like people think that you know opening up to somebody is a matter of whether or not like that person is comfortable and then things like that like if you are not creating a safe space for people to be themselves and be honest and transparent with you you cannot be upset with them when they don't speak to you yeah and you're, or you're when like, they just don't speak out in general exactly like, there's so, so many victims and survivors I will say survivors there's so many survivors who haven't spoken on it and the reason and that they don't yeah. say anything to you is because you have not it's not a safe space. The world is not a safe space. So even if you are a safe haven for them, the world is not a safe space. I remember th- and to have judgment for that is just like, look at what's going on right now. There are people literally, he has harmed over 100 people. Some Bruh. of them have died due to the causes, the, the conditions of his abuse. People can't have kids. People, to like yeah, people have lung, been like lasting diseases. Like, like, yeah, this like, is sickness. It's crazy. And for people to be outside protesting that, it shows survivors of other abusers. Why say something? Because there's always going to be an auntie or an uncle or a cousin or a brother right there defending this person and not believing what I say, even though I have no reason to lie. Yeah, and when it comes to, honestly, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, when it comes to, you know, like having a hyper visible abuser and all of that, there's always going to be people to stand with you. So it's like, don't ever feel like, you know, it's redundant for you to speak out because there's always going to be people to stand with you. Forget all these aunties and all these dumbass people. Yeah. Like, I always keep my, I always say, like, I make sure to throw this out there every once in a while that, like, my DMs are open. I have my DMs open on Twitter and Instagram. Anyone can send me a message and I will read it. So if you have something to say and you want to share it with people, I will share it for you anonymously so that you don't have to be you know the person outwardly expressing it exactly or i will just read it myself i'll share information with you because the amount of resources and then 
you'll be able to move on better. I don't know what it does for people, but I just know that like I want to make sure that people know that like we are down I'm to bring here. awareness to your problem. We here. People DM me all the time. I will I retweet love it. Blowing a nigga spot spot up. Up. All that. Exactly. I'll fight. So. I'll. I don't care. I'll be the person to put it out there that a person has harmed someone because I don't. If a nigga want to step to me. Thu, thu, thu. <laughs> like, please try it if you want to. <laughs> like, and then I walked in there like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> I feel like that. I, this is good. I feel like people got a good gist of our personalities yeah. through the icebreakers. And I, I love that when we get passionate about stuff because people can really get a good yeah grip grasp on us that's a grip grip and grasp a good a good a, grip. A good grip on us <laughs> don't on please don't grip me it, whatever you whatever you're interpreting the word grip as please don't do it to me a little choke <laughs> sounds not bad. crazy a little choky choke's not that bad that's not a grip <laughs> <laughs> i'm crying okay but yeah this is us you know, I'm so glad you guys are here to get to know us. Keep liking, subscribing. Commenting, giving us feedback, yes, all of that good stuff. Yes, we love constructive criticism. We are not sensitive. And it helps us. We want to get better and we for you. So yeah. please give us the tools to do that. Again, this is Hers and Hers. I'm Tay. I'm Nick. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks See for tuning in, week. guys. <laughs>